Burke Hill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also uh, how to manage the volume of Twitter information. And uh, you can you can go through Twitter uh, on your computer, or you can do it through a smartphone app. Um, I know, well, like TweetDeck is one of them. Seismic, is that how you pronounce that, 2.0? Yeah, Seismic uh, 2.0. Yeah. Uh, the one I use is TweetCast, I think it's called, um, and, and I'm really happy with that one. You know, the cool thing about Twitter that you, you need to keep in mind so that you're not overwhelmed by the thought of being on it is that you can read a whole bunch of things and you can access databases there, but uh, you never have to tweet a thing. You really, you never have to say a thing. You can be an invisible person, follow a bunch of people, but then also just do database searches that will bring up the information that people are putting out there. Um, and, and so I know you wanted to make mention of email addresses. Is that right? Yes. Um, you know, this kind of, this actually, with, in regards to email addresses, Tammy, applies to social media kind of across the board and not only Twitter, but you know, you may consider uh, creating a individual email address or a unique email address, such as uh, your name, uh, sm, like social media, uh, at gmail.com or whatever your uh, email address is, um, in order to funnel all your uh, social media or job-seeking info. You know, and keeping that separate from your either corporate email, if you're still a you know an employed seeker and looking for a different position, or if you're unemployed, it actually really helps you separate out the relevant information from the just barrage of information that you can get uh, from updates on a very regular basis from social media, emails, you know, sign up for this, what have you. So I always recommend to, you know, clients or people that are, you know, signing up for different platforms to, you know, make a separate email address and kind of funnel all that information in that direction. Can you explain uh, just briefly what comes into your email address? When you say social media news and email updates, um, what are you specifically talking about? If you were to get on Twitter, then what would what would come to you via this email address? Um, what would come to you via that email address, Tammy, is a an update every time someone follows you. Uh, okay. So, but as far as a a uh, consistent flow of information, you're not going to get information about, you know, when someone actually tweets you. Um, you know, if someone does a direct response to you or sends you a direct, uh, you know, tweet uh, at your name, then, uh, yes, you are going to get that in your email inbox. But, you know, as far as the broader social media picture, I mean, that can encompass, you know, updates on Facebook, uh, Facebook changes, people's posts, event postings. Um, it can also, for blogs, you know, if you sign up for somebody's email, or to receive a notice when they do a new blog, that will show up. Um, so it can be a pretty large volume of information in addition to whatever, whatever else that you have signed up for, for you know, a catalog or email list or business um, or an offer. You know? So uh, I try to keep all that stuff completely separate because I get enough emails in my business inbox during the day that you know, I just don't need to try and manage all the rest of it. So <laughs> it's just a, just a handy tip. Well, and when it comes to setting up a Gmail account or a Ymail account, things that are free, I always recommend to my clients that they do have a separate one, and, and I recommend using the word hire, H-I-R-E, and then your name at gmail.com. If that's taken, you could always go to ymail.com uh, because those are less used. Uh, but what that does, you can put that on your resume. What I think it is or it can be used for is – that it's separate from your personal email inbox where you've subscribed to 100 different newsletters and something could get buried in there. So if you just have a separate email account for uh, just your job searching stuff, uh, it, it really does work wonders. Plus, it's a really cute kind of email. I shouldn't say cute. It's an effective kind of email that's on your resume that, that shows that you're serious about looking for a position. Um, so, you know, that's another thing that you can use a different one for. And it sounds like, given the amount of information that might be coming through that social media Gmail account, you might want to set up a separate one with hire Will Gladhart or hire Tammy Cavell at gmail.com. Uh, 
Yeah, I, um, I actually really, I really like that idea of separating out your, um, well, your uh, job search, uh, you know, funnel of information from you know social media or your personal email. Uh, you know, it's a great way to you know keep all your information separate, but also keep track of you know, who is contacting you and are people actually getting back to you via you know either online or a resume. That's a great idea, Tammy. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and so. Once you have that Twitter account set up, and you again go back to to Will's PowerPoint presentation that is on SlideShare, good information about exactly how to set it up. You've got screenshots, plus you've got authors' notes. Is that what they call those? Just uh, yes. really written instructions on how to do that, and of course the glossary of terms that you were talking about. So once you've set up that Twitter account and you're ready to begin searching for jobs. Really, the probably the two most effective ways are using what are called hashtags, which is the pound sign, and then followed by the topic. You just type out the topic after the pound sign, or participating in hosted chats. So there's a definition of you know pound sign hashtags in the glossary of terms, um, with a list of also pound sign chats, such as um, you do pound sign job hunt chat. Or HF chat. What's uh, what's HF chat? Um, that's Hire Friday chat. It's a uh, Friday chat that's held at noon on Fridays for job seekers or uh, employers that are looking for specific job seekers. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's a group of networkers, job seekers, uh, recruiters, uh, and uh, as well as HR individuals that participate in that chat. And I would say about uh, uh, it's you know, uh, national. So probably about uh, oh, 400, 500 people typically participate in that chat. Okay, okay. Now, so great, great, great resource. Yeah, yeah. And when you're, you know, something I meant to ask you on the um, using the hashtags, can you give us an example of what hashtag you would use if you're looking for a topic? Let's say, for instance, you're an accounting manager in Kansas City. So how would you use these hashtags to pull up the database, and what does that database look like? There are tweets from companies and from recruiters and from people who have jobs open. I mean, how does that work? Give us an example. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, here's a great example, Tammy, is you, know, you would go into uh, – you can do this two ways. You can use Google, or you can actually, if you have a Twitter account, you can go and log into Twitter, and you can run a search in Twitter on your specific keyword or term, let's say – hashtag accounting, uh, comma, hashtag Kansas City. And Kansas City would be all one word. Um, so you're going to get every single job uh, or tweet that has been specifically tagged with that uh, specific, you know, topic. You know, and a lot of companies here in, like, Kansas City and other parts of the country, you know, they're – a great example is, uh, you know, H&R Block uh, is looking for – uh, several tax representatives uh, for the upcoming tax year this next year. So they would recently put out a post tagging, um, you know, I think it was uh, tax accountants and then Kansas City. So they're tagging it for a specific term uh, and then also the, ge the location that they're looking for. And you can just simply run a search. And in order to find out a list of hashtags, you can simply run a Google search on, you know, like pound sign accounting. And that will give you a link to the actual Twitter feed. Now, again, you have to be logged on to Twitter to get access to that, but you can at least find out if that's a valid hashtag or not. So pretty much any keyword or any idea or combination, you know, what I have found a number of people that have successfully used is, like, for example, your city and then job or jobs. So an example would be oh, hashtag. Oh, just the word job. Not, not yep. the actual job, but just the word job. Yeah. Just the word job or jobs. Um, like yeah. hashtag Kansas City, all one word, comma, hashtag job. And then a huge list of uh, jobs come up, and you literally can just scroll through that and see if they have any relevancy or not. But, you know, if you want to dive down and get a little more specific, some companies will list, you know, by specific, um, t you know, like topic or like accounting. But – a lot of them will simply, you know, tag it as jobs. Yeah. And how often and, do you suggest that we look through those? 
specifically? I, I'd say a couple of times a day, once a week. What do you do? I'd say once a week. Uh, you know, uh, once to twice a week. Now, um, one thing that I do want to mention, and this is something that's in the PowerPoint presentation, but you know, most of our listeners uh, probably have a smartphone, and you know, there's some really great you know Twitter uh, apps that allow you to basically manage all that content coming in. So, you know, like for example, you know, some of the chats or things that I participate in, I don't always get a chance to uh, join them. So I have their uh, hashtag in my phone, so literally once a week I can go and I can look through maybe, you know, 150, 200 tweets, uh, and I haven't had to participate in the conversations. It's whenever I had the time. So, you know, a, call, a, a job seeker could have, you know, hashtag Kansas City, comma, hashtag job as their search on their smartphone in that application and literally just have to look at it once a week and see all the latest updates for their particular city or region. So, you know, you don't, you don't have to be on there all the time, and you don't have to be tweeting. It's just how you're accessing the information. Yeah, yeah. You know, it kind of reminds me of what I recommend to my clients when they're looking at uh, the business journal, that they should do it once a week, usually, you know, same time each week, because you can go back to the headlines for the last five business days. And so basically you can get a list of all of the companies that are growing, that are doing well, and you can contact them proactively. And I just, you know, if you do it once or twice a week, that's really all you need. You don't have to follow it every day. That's right, that's and, and you could pair that, you know, physical search or that, you know, actually business journal search or company search and look at their Twitter feed, see what they're saying, you know, and see if they're actually a fit for you as a job seeker, but also what positions that they've posted in your local area. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and, there, and I, I do want to – well, I was going to say, Tammy, there's one more resource. It's called uh, TweetMyJobs.com. Um, mm -hmm. Now, this, this profile allows you to go in and set up kind of a resume and uh, run searches um, to access Twitter. So if you're, you know, really against signing up in, for Twitter, this is kind of a way around it. Um, I will mention that it doesn't pull, like, as much information as actually using Twitter itself. I have found, and several other uh, job seekers who have utilized this platform have said, you know, I, it, it pulled out some information, but it didn't pull out all the relevant information, you know, to a particular area or industry. You know that we were trying to search for. So it, it's it's a good you know platform, but you aren't going to get all the information that you would out of Twitter. So ah, interesting, 